just say one more thing. I, I, I really would just like to say that um, I, I have to congratulate Iowa on an incredible season. Awesome, awesome. And I, I want to personally thank Caitlin Clark for lifting up our sport. Her, she carried a she carried a heavy load for our sport. And it just is not going to stop here on the collegiate tour. But when she is the number one pick in the WNBA draft, she's going to she's going to lift that league up as well. So so Caitlin Clark, if you're out there, you are one of the goats of our games. And we appreciate you. Thank you, coach. Thank you. Be And so I thought Don Staley stuck the gun. I'll allow my players to play. Mm -hmm. A lot of coaches, once that thing got six, nothing, eight, nothing, they'd have called timeout. Don mm -hmm. said, hell, y'all got us in this. Oh, no, no, no. Listen, let me, let, me, let, me, let me tell you. What, wait, wait a minute now. <laughs> you can attest to this, and everybody in the chat can attest to this. Don Staley don't call no timeouts. Remember how your mama, your grandma, your mama used to look at you in church and she'd give that look from the choir, from the choir stand, and you misbehaving uh -huh. in church, and uh -huh. she'd give you that look. And when you get that look, you know, well, you better tighten up. Don mm -hmm. Staley ain't calling no timeouts. Look at Don Staley's facial expression to her team from the sideline. She going to look at you. That is, that's the timeout right there. Yeah. If you pay attention, Don Staley give everybody that look and you already know what it means. Mm -hmm. All right, now, tighten yeah. up. I ain't calling, I ain't calling no timeout. It's Don Staley give everybody a look. Man, they, they get, they get it right together. Did you peep what she said? She said, we had scouted them. We was running their sets on Tuesday before mm. we got here. Say, so we we knew, we, we kind of knew what was going on. Right. Yeah, 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 yeah. Y'all miss me? <laughs> Took a week break, but I'm back at it, man. Big J TV. I wanted to talk about that Don Staley, you know, quote and clip at the start of the video where she talks about you know, Caitlin Clark being one of the goats. Now, obviously, if you didn't know, sports fans everywhere, Caitlin Clark and the Iowa Hawkeyes lost to South Carolina. You know what I mean? And, you know, let's be real, man. Almost everybody knew this was coming. If you have any knowledge of the game of college basketball, or at least have just a basic understanding of the game, you knew that the Iowa Hawkeyes were heavy underdogs. Now, I didn't check the betting lines. I didn't bet on this game. I kind of stood away. I'm like, bruh, everybody knows it's going to happen. And what everybody predicted was going to happen, happened. South Carolina blew the doors of the Iowa Hawkeyes. You know what I mean? <clears throat> and other than the first quarter, where Caitlin Clark pretty much went crazy with 18 points, the rest of the game was a wash. Halftime was kind of close, but it was a wash. Now, why was it a wash? Because Don Staley is clearly the best coach in college athletics. I'm talking about football and basketball. The run that she's going on right now, specifically with her team, is absolutely legendary. I think in the past, you know, three seasons... She's won a hundred some games and only three losses. This is a Nick Saban type of run that Don Staley is having. And she has, as the coach of the team, she's the star. She is the star. And this reminds us yet again that the game of college basketball, or even college football, in my opinion, is so much more about coaching than skill. Coaching, discipline, the way and the will to win, that starts from the top, from leadership. When you go to the professional leagues, it's not too much about coaching. You know what I mean? The skill and talent level is obviously there. Everybody who makes it to the league, whether that be the NBA or the NFL, I'm talking about football and basketball, well, whoever makes it to the league, they are incredibly talented. So what differentiates a lot of the players is the mentality, the work ethic, Sometimes the coaching, so the coaching, not as much because everybody is so incredibly talented, right? What we saw yesterday 
was Caitlin Clark, being a generational player, being one of the GOATs, lose to a GOAT team, and more specifically, a GOAT coach. Okay? Keep in mind, Don Staley has won three championships, right? Right now, she's won three championships, two in the past three years, right? She is an elite company right now. Only Kim Mulkey, Pat Summit, and Gino Oriyama are the only people in the women's basketball game, college basketball game, who have won more. She's up there with the legends, man. And what we need to stop doing is riding bandwagons, man. Riding D-I-C-K. And that's ironic because we're talking about women's basketball. We got to stop doing that, man. We got to stop entertaining the nonsense, man. Yes, Caitlin Clark is a great player. But if we're being really objective, UConn should have won that game. You know what I mean? The Final Four game. <laughs> if it wasn't for that crazy call by the refs, they should have won that game. You know what I mean? Calling that move and pick, literally with nine seconds left. It was seven, my bad, left in the game. Where one call decided the game. Obviously, it was rigged and fixed. But if we had a UConn versus South Carolina final, that would have been, in my eyes, objectively, a closer game. Because you're going against two legendary, two of the best coaches in college basketball. They're able to make adjustments. They're able to, you know... Make the right call, substitutions, and know the momentum and style of game. Gino Oriyama, we got we to gotta give him props. He is a fantastic coach. And oftentimes, we get caught up in the hype of a superstar player. And then we forget that you need a team, bro. South Carolina Gamecocks, they look like a team, dog. And look at this. In order for Caitlin Clark to even make, you know, the finals, again, two years in a row, two-time loser, by the way. Let's just add that on. I'm not even hate. I, and I got people in the comments before were saying I'm hating on Caitlin Clark. I'm not hating on Caitlin Clark. Two times going to the finals and got whooped. Let me repeat what I just said. She and her team who went to the finals two times and they got whooped. Meaning the games weren't close. Last year against LSU, they got smoked by 20 points. This year versus South Carolina game, Cox, they got smoked by, I think, 19 points or 18 points. So these are blowouts. That's what I'm trying to tell y'all. These are blowouts, man. We're not dealing with a team or a player who really, really uplifts a team to the title. So when people... We're over here calling her the GOAT of women's basketball. That's insulting to the women before who had won. That's really disrespectful. See, getting to the championship game is an accomplishment in itself, and we got to respect that. Having the most points in NCAA basketball, men or women, we got to respect that. We're not going to disrespect that. I'm proud of Caitlin Clark for that. But if you are great, if you are one of the ghosts, like Don Staley said. We can't just, you know, sugarfoot around. We can't just, you know, be soft on you. No, we have to put you up to a standard. To Cheryl Miller, Cheryl Spruce. You know what I mean? We gotta, you know what I mean? Maya Moore. We gotta, we gotta compare you to other goats in the game. And we can't be soft on you and say, oh, at least she made it to. No, man. She got blowed the hell out in the finals, dog. Not in one finals, two finals in a row, bro. And I did some research. She hasn't ever won a state championship ever in high school. Right? So this is what hap what's happening in her career so far is that she's able to take it to the top. But she's rarely or if ever able to finish the job, fam. You know what I mean? I'll give you a great example. Right now, I'm watching the men's finals, UConn Huskies versus Purdue Boilermakers. Right? There is a lottery pick in this game called uh, Zach Eady. Okay? Canadian. Shout out to my Canadians. From Toronto. 7 foot 4 <clears throat> center. Really, really good. Clearly the best player on the court. 
But guess what? His team, he's placed for Purdue, by the way, is getting blown the hell out in the second court, in second half, 51 to 38. This game is, it's coming, it's getting over. There's about 10 minutes left in the game. It's going to be over because clearly UConn Huskies have been the best team in the tournament for men's basketball. And they don't have any stars. They don't have any stars. They just play complimentary, fast-paced foot basketball. That's what they do. They play as a team. They've been, they're like fourth year, they're third year, fourth year students, man. Student athletes. These are not guys who do ones and dones. I don't, I don't believe there's any ones and dones inside this men's final. Zach Eady has been at Purdue for three years. Three years. You know what I mean? So that's what it's all about, man. As great as Caitlin Clark is, basketball is a team game. And yeah, she's done a lot for the women's game. We respect that. But I'm telling you right now, she she's going to go number one in the WNBA draft. But she's number one. She's number one. And we have to understand that the point of the game is winning. And even if you would never won, you could not be the GOAT. Get in the comments. Let me know what y'all think. Big J TV. Like, comment, sub them up.